Hi Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your general reading for October 2020. These are going to be short readings uh, because I am kind of pressed for time um, under the gun. I'm, I've got to go see the prosthodontist tomorrow. No, yes. And then I'm going to be having oral surgery on Monday. So um, we shall see what happens. Um, I'm going to be coming to you today with the before tarot. We will clarify with La Vida Sibila, and then we'll pull a Golden Nostradamus card, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and mention that moon thing that I was talking about in the general reading, uh, in the open reading that I posted the other day on the full moon. Full moon is today, tomorrow, roughly, in the sign of Aries. It is also our harvest moon, uh, which happens right before or right after the uh, fall equinox. And I think we've got, or we'll be coming into the, I don't know. I don't remember it being the first day of fall. And look, my calendar ain't been changed since August, so that ought to tell you something. Uh, um, let's see. Actually, uh, yeah, the fall equinox was back on the 22nd. So, um, wow, where was I? Um, and so we'll also be having a second full moon this month, which is known as a blue moon, okay? I don't know, that stuck to mind. So... Uh, just wanted to mention that to you again. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around. I am still waiting for the end of hurricane season. I still have those, my hurricane shutters up on my window. It's actually making me nuts. Just one more month and hopefully things will calm down. I'm hoping to be able to buy myself a, a, a greenhouse um, so that I could put all my, y'all don't know the plants I have, um, in, in my, so I can protect them over the winter. So, nine cards down. Here we go. I don't know why I told you all that. The temperance card. Well, this is interesting. The five of cups. <laughs> and the, well, the reason I laughed is because it's the cat. And it actually looks like my cat. But the three of cups. Now that's interesting because there's a representation of ca of cups all throughout this. Two of cups. The death card. The eight of wands. Oh, that's odd. Those wands, those are those wands are odd to me. Okay. The star card. So now I have three major arcana cards here. The three of swords. So I have two threes. Hmm. And then the Eight of Cups. I'm sorry, Eight of Pentacles. So I also have two eights here. Now, two threes can mean um, cheating or backstabbing or flirting. Um, two threes can also mean, let me see what's under the, well, let me wait. Two threes can also mean one of you is craving more change and excitement. And I think that's what this is. Um, and two eights uh, mean for some, some of you and your beloved are going to, is that right? Hold on, let me make sure I got it right. You will receive news that affects the relationship, but if I'm not mistaken, two threes can all, I'm mean, sorry, two eights can also mean, I need to build me a shelf over here so I can keep all my books up there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> my throat's it. <laughs> Excuse me, scratchy. Two eights appearing in a, in a reading implies that there may be a slight concern in regards to a new romance relationship or partnership. So again, you will receive news that affects the relationship. And then that's the two meanings of the two eights. And then the two threes, uh, one of you is craving more um, changes and excitement. The other one can foretell of a small but pleasant surprise. Now, I've never really seen that, 
What I have seen it show up is basically uh, that one of you craving more excitement and the other one where, it, you know, it speaks to flirting and cheating, excessive flirting and cheating, that kind of thing. I've never seen the one where it says it's small, you know, a small pleasant surprise. To me, that's always like a three sevens kind of a thing. What is underneath the deck? Well, we have a seven of cups. Now, this is quite interesting because there are lots of cups here. So I don't know if this is that Neptunian quality. I know that we do, there's been what, five or six planets that have been in retrograde and they're gonna be making some moves here. Um, but I don't know if this is an implication of someone, if not having a drinking or alcohol or substance abuse problem, this tells me that there's been some kind of interaction where there have been those things involved, drugs, um, lots of alcohol, or maybe it's, it's not necessarily that quality of, of confusion because you're confused. It is the confusion is caused because there's been some mind altering substances that have been involved. And I'm not here to pass judgment, so please don't uh, think that. Um, what I find to be most, see here we have the, the temperance angel. They're filling her cups from this urn and she has both of her feet in the water. Now normally to me, this says that you're immersed in your emotions. And temperance is just that. It is about tempering, it's about moderation. All things in moderation. So this is about um, you're being immersed in your emotions. Those cups, you're filling your, you're filling, your cups are being over, are filled with emotion. You are like in the thick of it. But then we see this five of cups where one of the cups, we don't know if the cup was knocked over by the kitten or if the kitten is coming to investigate. But normally what we see in this card is we see those three cups are spilled, right? Here we only have a loss of one cup, that water that's inside. So there's still four cups standing and someone standing squarely in the center of them. So to me, the, the idea that the cups are sitting in a square says that this person is more emotionally stable, okay? Even though he may be sad about that one cup, this opportunity that's been turned over or spilled. But then on the back side here, we see two of the women holding cups. One woman is squeezing grapes into the cups of the other two women, but her cup is on the ground. So I don't know if that's this cup, okay? Or if it's one of those cups, but that's a lot of cups, even though this is not a cup. I'm looking at the imagery of the cards. We see two people meeting, coming together. The two cups are in the air surrounding the caduceus. They're not being held, so they are not in possession of them. But we see two people approaching each other, two people that are facing each other. So to me, this implies that this relationship has not, I don't know what, the, the proposal or the, the actual deal hasn't been sealed yet, okay? It's literally up in the air. Now, this may not necessarily be a romantic relationship, but that's kind of how it feels. This could be a business deal in some way, shape, or form. Um, I have seen the Two of Cups show up when, when it is speaking to a business partnership where, you know, everybody, where you really just get the other partner. You guys really work well together. It's like you complete each other. One person may be the numbers person and the other person is the person who actually does the work. That kind of a thing. But here we have the death card. And what I find to be interesting about this particular death card is that since this is the before tarot, this is before the death card arrives into town. As you can see, he's riding through the graveyard. Uh, in the other depiction, he's already arrived in town. The Pope is standing in front of him, imploring him not to come. The King is already dead, you know. This guy is on his way in. So this lets me know that there is a ending and a change, a transformation of the situation. I wish I could tell you what these blue things were uh, there on the ground. It's almost as if, to me, they remind me of, what are they, fairies and sprites? 
uh, but but maybe these are the lights of souls, the illuminations who are re recognizing that death is riding through. I think whatever this thing is, it happens in a hurry. These eight of wands. Now, typically the eight of wands does speak to news coming in. It also speaks to travel, sometimes travel by air. But basically it represents this idea of something coming in and it's coming in in a hurry. The fact that it, it these, these wands are aimed uh, at this, uh, what do you call it, uh, cloud in the sky that's shaped like this salamander, which typically represents the idea of fire. Salamanders, uh, because they can run hot and cold, but this is the shape in the air. It's not an actual salamander. So we see that these wands are aimed at something. In the other card, in the regular deck, they are simply flying and they're coming in from a different angle. They're coming in this way. And we don't know where they're coming from or what they're aimed at, but this is aimed at this particular thing, something running hot and cold. So this is going to happen quite clearly. There's something else about these wands that I can't quite put my finger on. It's another symbol that I can't quite get a handle on. So I'm going to look at that one with the Sibylas. Here we see the star card. Normally in this deck, the woman is kneeling. She is drawing water up into one picture and pouring it out in the five directions in the other. But here she's standing and she's holding on to both of them. She's even got that stork, which normally is sitting way back there in the tree. But here she has the stork on her shoulder. Now this card typically represents Venus. And as I told you about the, um, Venus is about the fairness of it. So this is about getting clear, being comfortable in who you are. Um, it is also a card of healing, okay? She's, she's literally standing on the bank, holding on to these two pictures. I'm not quite sure exactly what, what's, what, what this is telling me, but I do believe that it has to do with when this, the moon conjunction or the moon meets up with Venus. And I know Venus is doing some stuff. So let's say around, yeah, moon conjunct Venus. So say around October 13th, okay? That's my, that's my timing. And we see that this is poised, these three swords are poised to pierce this heart. That is a crow. Crows are harbingers of bad news. And here we see that the person is depicted as having completed one uh, coin and is hanging it up on the wall. Uh, but there are three more left on the ground that have not been started yet. So, you know, as I always say, coins are not necessarily always about finances. They are about your values. Money's about, you know, in love or two sides two different sides of the same coin because they equate to value, but the pentacles always relate to the doing of things. Maybe this is three things left undone. Maybe these are three things that need to be done, hammered out, so to speak. Um, but I think what I find to be most interesting is this seven, because in the other, the regular deck, the figure is in relief as if in a nightmare scenario, he's black and everything else is lit up in the background and he's facing that and he's standing back as if he's in surprise or fear or shock. This person has their back to those cups with their eyes covered. So what this is saying to me is that whatever this situation is dealing with, you are actively trying not to see whatever the choices are, whatever the emotions are, whatever the illusions are, whatever the deceptions are, and so because you are, you have your hands over your own eyes, this is saying you are blindly um, choosing to ignore whatever this is. I don't know. You know, again, I'm not here to pass judgment. So the only thing I can look at, five of cups, three of cups, two of cups, which is interesting because from the five to the three gives me two, but the two to the three gives me five, right? The Eight of Wands, the Three of Swords, and this. That's what I can look at, these cards, as they relate to Temperance, Death, and the Star card. I can tell you that the truth of the matter is, 
if the death card is going to come, the death card is like the cosmic scissors. It says that whatever this situation is, it's not going to return to the same ever. Someone has crossed a Rubicon, they have done something or said something where the situation will never be the same. But having it here with the star card presents a moment of healing, a moment for you to, I think, get clear within yourself. Because I do think that there's some bad news coming. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at this cups. There's a lot of cups here. Normally when I see a lot of cups, what this says to me basically is that this is going to be a highly emotional time for you. Okay. Five of cups with the star card is an indication. It tells of karmic lessons being experienced and learned and of the issue leaving your life. There are bright blessings ahead for you it tells that karmic conditions have passed with the debt being paid there are now new endeavors you know I think to me this is the idea that perhaps past present future past present future you've been waiting and biding your time for this to come together you've really had your hopes and dreams wrapped up in it but this person has been resolute they're not changing their mind. Maybe you even were trying to celebrate it, even though this person has kind of maybe been standing stock still. Sometimes those four cups can be somebody whose emotions, they're not interested, right? They're not making any moves. They're not showing you what you need to see. They're not telling you what you need. They're just kind of there, right? You can't even be bothered to shoo the cat away, <laughs> right? But in the meantime, you've been, you know, maybe out celebrating with your girlfriends. I don't know if this third woman who's who's putting that wine in those cups is you or if it's a third party. There is an indication of a third party here. Um, okay, so that was the five. Let me take a look at the three of cups. And the placement with the death card. It indicates the endings of things with new beginnings to start. It tells of a complete change in lifestyle and or career, which will bring new people, situations, and circumstances into your life. It tells of starting over in a positive and beneficial way. It indicates a change of lifestyle or work and or career with new faces and places ahead. Next to the temperance, it asks you to take your time to adjust and adapt gradually to changes and new experiences and situations. Moderations in all things is the safest option. It indicates moderation and asks that you take your time to settle in and become accustomed to new and exciting changes and or additions in your life. Two of Cups tells me nothing. Okay, I'm going to move to the Eight of Wands now. Nothing about the Eight of Wands. Three of Swords. Nothing about the Three of Swords. Finally, the Eight of Coins. Nothing about the Eight of Coins. Oh, wait, next to the Three of Swords cards. Oh, is it next to the Three? No, next to Three Swords. So that's a completely different meaning. Not the Three of Swords, but next to Three Swords. Okay. Um, let's take a look at this Eight of Wands. This is the card that I want to... It's simply because... We still have the idea of a slight concern in regards to a new romance relationship. You know what this row across the center tells me is that before the meeting even happens, this ends. And it does so quickly. Um, 
I just don't understand the significance of the star card showing up before the... Well, I don't know. Because this could be because they haven't pierced the heart yet. It says that maybe this won't be as painful as you think it is. It's asking you to prepare. That's what that's telling me. Okay. Let's take a look at this Eight of Wands. It's just uh, something about the direction, the way they look. Disgracia. La Namica. And the Bambino. This speaks to disgrace, uh, being uh, humiliated, and it's done publicly. Remember that figure I told you? It's like she's getting everybody else drunk, but she's well aware of what she's doing. This is a rival. This is an enemy. Now, sometimes this card will show up when it, it, when it says that there's somebody that you don't know, but it's somebody who's had it in for you all along. And maybe what the coins are telling or what the cups are saying is that this is a social situation, perhaps. But I do get the sense that you know this person. Now, this has several meanings for me. Normally, this represents, it can just be that, a baby. It could also speak to new things. But remember I was saying to you there's something about these wands that just didn't sit right with me and that newt there. I think this is the idea of a pregnancy that comes to light or happens rapidly. This reminds me that to me looks like an embryo. <laughs> oh wow, the cards are weird sometimes. So there's either some kind of public pronouncement or... Or something. I'm gonna look at these three of pentacles, uh, three of cups up here. You know, none of these cards are speaking to me. They're not telling me. I'm not. Sometimes they will say things to me. Um, this star card is doing its best to speak to me, but not too well. Let me look at this three to see if if. What this Three of Cups is all about, it's just uh, the suspiri. Yes, the amore. And the pensiero. The suspiri, the card uh, of tears and sighs and anxieties. It represents a situation where there has been lots of time with tears spent. It also represents the idea of feeling left behind in some way that your ship has sailed. But what is interesting to me about this card is that the truth of the problem is something that is projected into the future. See the crooked arrow? This is being something this is something you've been worried about. It's something you've been crying about. Again, as I said, I think you've been waiting on it. You've been waiting for this meeting to happen, the two of you to come together. But that comes to an end, and it comes to an end because the person finally just comes out and says, you know what, I got somebody else, and we're getting ready to have a baby. If I had to take a guess, this woman may be of foreign um, ethnicity from a foreign country, maybe of a different ethnic or racial uh, makeup. Uh, can also be someone who would be dark hair or dark complected. Not necessarily, but that just came to me. Okay. I want to take a look at this. Uh, let me look at this eight of cups. I mean, uh, pentacles here. Fortuna, luckiest card in the deck. One of them. Dinari. Oh, wow. And the Falsita. This card has the power to annul this card. Oh, I didn't even finish those, did I? 
I did not. And it looks as though these would have been the cards that have fallen there. But we're going to take it like it is. The fact that you are hanging up money or you're putting money away or you're, you know, and you still have more to make. This tells me with this card, even though this card has come out, that ultimately this is going to be, you're going to be afforded some type of protection and also some kind of financial um, safety in this or stability in this. But it's based upon the lies. Okay? And this card, the Donati, even though it represents money and finances, it goes back to the idea because it shows up in the suit of cups, right? That people's emotions are, are tied to their money or finances. This is why there are always arguments over money. But also, <clears throat> it speaks to the idea of value, those things you hold precious, right? Your self-worth, that's precious, you know, um, with those particular lies um you don't have to buy into what someone was saying let me go back up here to this suspiety and maybe for some reason i was supposed to do that we'll see what comes out on the uh rest of the suspiety cards but this tells me that you this is being projected into the future and i think you kind of already know what's coming you just haven't been wanting to deal with it Allegretta al cuore again like a three of cups News from far away, the messaggeri. I think you already know that message or that news that time is coming. This speaks to a wedding. So there's a wedding coming. That's it. And this is going to end the, the ties that you have with that person. Whether these ties have been reeled and or imagined. Okay. Um, formulate your question for the Golden Nostradamus. I'm so sorry to give you that news, but, um, you know, maybe this is a way of the cards to tell you to get ready to prepare yourself. And that's what this card is telling me. Here we go. One card for the Golden Nostradamus. Well, I don't know what this is. Number 27. The perfumes. Well, oh, that's interesting. The scent of a woman is at its best when only her true nature is expressed. Careful of one or more foppish, frivolous, and superficial individuals. Neither should you be avid or flippant. Sobriety is needed in order to act correctly and not let oneself get involved with weak elements. There you have it. I hope this helped you, uh, Libra, for October. Again, I'm looking at around October 13th as being the, maybe the start, the end, the beginning, the middle. So until next time, hang in there. Namaste. Oh, wait, I don't know how to turn my thing off. <laughs> Bye.